how to use Microsoft Teams for project management step by step. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with project management on Microsoft Teams. So let's get into it. Now, as you guys can see, I have Microsoft Teams opened up over here. And once you go into Microsoft Teams, you will see on your left panel, you have your activity, chat, teams assignment, calendars, and then you have apps. Now, there are two ways to integrate a project manager into Microsoft Teams. Either you can go back to your homepage on Microsoft 365, click on apps, and then go into the planner over here. That is one way to do it. However, you can do it directly on Microsoft Teams as well. For that, just go into Microsoft Teams. You can click on apps over here and then just search for planner. Now, once you search for planner, you will have this application. This is the one you want, which is tasks by planner and to do. This is going to be by the Microsoft Corporation and you can open this up. Now, once you open this up, you will see it in your left panel. It will be created directly into your Microsoft Teams account. Now, this is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to just go into your Teams and in your Microsoft Teams section, you have this section for general discussion or, you know, whatever it might be. You're just going to go into that. You have posts and then you have files. And then within that, you can add a tab and then you can click on tasks by planner and then you can create a new plan over here. So I'm going to name this as my project manager and then just click on save. Now, once you click on save, this will, on the back end of your Microsoft 365, create this planner for you. So as you are adding and doing things over here, they will be automatically synced up to the back end of the planner. And if you want, you can do it on the side tab as well. I like to do it in the team section because it's always easier for the rest of your team members to access it as well. Now, once you have added your project manager, you're going to have a few different buckets that you can categorize your tasks in. So we have a to-do list, which I just like to rename as tasks. Then I can add a new bucket, which might be in progress, which might be things that are currently happening. And then we might have our final bucket, which is for completed tasks. Now, this is in the form of a board. I can also go ahead and view them in the form of a list. And then you can also view charts and then schedule as well. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to add my tasks directly in the list format. So if I want, let's say it's going to be for launching a new vitamin. So let's say I have to formulate vitamin C find suppliers and then i want to find packaging like this now i have added a bunch of different tasks and you will see information will be displayed in columns as well and it will show you the bucket it has been inserted into these are just tasks and then you can move them into the in progress section once you have started you know accomplishing them you also have due dates and priorities that you can set. This might be important. You know, certain things might be urgent. You can add them over there as well. Now, one thing to note is that you can go into your board view and click on a task to add more information about it. So to find packaging, I can also add a label to this and I can build my own label. This might be for me to know which business this is for. So let's say I am working for two businesses. One is Meraki and one is Jordan. Now, if I'm doing this for Meraki, I can label it for Meraki. Let's say I'm doing both of these tasks for Meraki and this one I'm doing for Jordan. So I can add that label. You can label your priorities as well. You can label the level of urgency. You can label the duration of a task. You can do a lot of different types of labels depending on the type of project that you are managing. Now, after that, if I'm starting on a particular task, let's say I am finding suppliers, so I can move that in the in progress bucket. However, another great feature that I like to use is going into the scheduling section. And then we have our unscheduled tasks. So these are tasks that are just added in a bucket, but they don't have a particular due date. And if I add a due date like this and I add a start date like this, this can help us in viewing the task in the schedule section. Plus, if I want to push in more tasks into my day and I'm not certain about how I'm supposed to, you know, which days I would be free to add more tasks, I can go into the schedule section. 
Once you're in your schedule section, on the left, you're going to find all the tasks that haven't been scheduled. So you can just drag and drop a task on a certain day to help you in scheduling your tasks. Plus, you have monthly views as well as weekly views, and you can also build recurring tasks. So if you want to build a recurring task, like a team meeting that is held every week, you can click on add task and just add meeting. And then in this, I will click on this particular task. Let's say this is weekly updates meeting. Below that, we have the buckets, the progress, the priorities, and the repetition. So you're going to click on repeat and you're going to do this weekly. And then this will automatically have a, a weekly repetition. This task will automatically be added over and over again with the new due date. After that, you also have notes you can attach, but this is just like a recurring task. So I don't have to worry about ever missing out on, you know, reminders for meetings and more. Now on the top left, you also have meeting options. So you can click on schedule a meeting and meet now for the rest of your Microsoft 360 platform. And you also have your top channels that you can link. Now with that, if you go into your teams, you have this project manager now. And if you go into posts, you can start posts and derive your data from your manager. So your task manager can be used. So I can search for tasks over here or project manager like this. And then you can, you know, use those applications and you will see on the bottom, you have a few different options like your loop, your uh, GIFs, your um, stream, as well as your praise. And in this way, this can help you in making sure that all of your work can be done all together and you don't have to worry about segregating work or worrying about whether or not certain things are being done timely or not. Now, other than that, you also have different filtration options that can help you in finding a particular task. You can filter out tasks by their due dates, priorities, labels, buckets, and assignments. So let's say I want to see what a particular employee is doing. I can just go on ahead and take a look at the assigned tasks for that particular employee. And you guys can see that you can also set progress bars. Now, this might be a bit counterintuitive if you take a look at the buckets that I've built because I've built a bucket called in progress while you also have progress labels directly in tasks. But the thing with these progress labels is that they only show up as like an icon on your individual task, which can be just not as definitive as just keeping your in progress tasks in one bucket and then your tasks that haven't been started in one bucket. So this is just your personal preference on how you want to add your tasks. Then if you take a look at the back end, you can go into tasks by planner and you have your shared plans and then you will have your project manager. So even if I'm not on Microsoft Teams, I can go into Microsoft 365, go into apps, go into my planner over here and still be able to access the planner that I built on Durden. You guys can see this is our project manager planner and I can open this up and it will be accessible to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you are now able to do your project management on Microsoft Teams. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.